Hi and welcome. In this video, we are going to see about the question perfect number and divisors. Okay, what is the problem? How to build the logic? How to approach this problem? And then the implementation part. Okay, so let's begin with the problem understanding part. So let's read it out. Have you heard of perfect numbers? If not, let me tell you what it is. Perfect numbers are integers that are equal to sum of all its divisor except that number itself. Okay. So sum of all its divisors except that number itself. That is a perfect number. Now given an integer n, write a program to print true if the perfect number or false if it is not the perfect number. Okay. So the input format is first line contains an integer t, the second line contains and then after that each line contains an integer n. Okay. So let's see. Let's understand what the problem is saying. So for example, we take a value of n as six. Fine. So what are the divisors of 6? So it is 1, 6, 2 and 3. Correct. Now what it is saying is perfect numbers are integers that are equal to sum of all its divisor except that number itself. Sum of all its divisor but not that number except that number itself. Okay. Sum of all its divisors. So 1 plus 2 plus 3 is nothing but 6. So if this sum is equal to the number given to us, if this sum is equal to the number given to us, then it is a perfect number else it is not a perfect number for example if n equals to 21 here you can see it is 1 21 okay and 3 7 anything else so except this number what is the sum the sum is nothing but 11 okay 1 plus 3 plus 7 is nothing but 11 okay so 11 is not equal to the number given so therefore 21 is not a perfect number according to the question fine so these were some test cases some simple test cases that are given to explain you what a perfect number is fine now if it is a perfect number we need to print true else we need to print false okay now let's see the input format given to us the input format says that the first line will have t so in the sample test cases okay first line will have nothing but t so here t equals to nothing but for example if here sample cases 6 and 21 2 6 and 21 so t is nothing but 2 that means we have two test case okay in the first test case n value will be 6 in the second test case n value will be 21 fine so we need our test case loop that will run how many times t number of times in this case t value is 2 okay in the first case n value will be given by the user as 6 in the second case n value will be given as 21 okay so this was the input format in the output format i told you we need to print true or false these are the constraints and now let's begin with the logic part so given n equals to let's say 12 so how do we find all the factors of 12 or all the divisors of 12 how do we find that okay what is the logic behind it of finding the factors okay so let's begin with that part uh, how we will find the divisors so n equals to 12 correct so the basic approach is very simple that start from 1 start with 1 okay go till 12 and for each number between them check whether 12 is divisible by that number or not correct now let's begin with this so first value will be 1 so 12 is 12 divisible by 1 or not so how we'll find that out if 12 is divisible by 1 or not using modulus operator using modulus operator now if this operator gives me value of 0 that means the 12 is perfectly divisible by 1 so if 12 mod 1 gives me 0 that means that 1 perfectly divides 12 okay 12 is being perfectly divided by 1 fine so then check the next number 12 mod 2 this will give me 0 because 2 multiplied by 6 becomes 12 we do not have any remainder remainder is nothing but 0 fine so check for 12 mod 3 so this will also give 0 because 3 into 4 is nothing but 12 check for 12 mod 4 this will also give me 0 because 4 into 3 is nothing but 12. We do not have any reminder. Now 12 mod 5. Now this will not give me 0. It will give me 1. It will give me sorry 2. It will not give me 0. That means the remainder is not 0. That means 12 is not perfectly divided by 5. Okay. So we will not count this one. 12 mod 6. Yes, it is 0. Okay. Now check for 12 mod 7. Is it 0? No. 12 mod 8. Is it 0? No. 12 mod 9. Is it 0? No. 12 mod 10 no 12 mod 11 no yes but 12 mod 12 is 0 okay so what we have we have here that we started with 1 
incremented the value one by one the one became two then three then four then five then six one by one till we reach the number itself till we reach the number itself okay and whenever the remainder became zero whenever the remainder became zero we will know that this value perfectly divides the number that is given to us okay so in this case one two three four six and twelve are the answers okay now when we get these answers we have to do not have to check for 12 we just need to sum all these values when we sum all these values it is i think by 13 15 and 16 so 16 is not equal to the number given to us that was 12 therefore 12 is not a perfect number okay so this will be the approach that we'll be using so starting with one we will go till n okay or we can go till less than or we can go till less than n here because we do not need to consider 12 in a case so from 1 to less than n we will go we will go and we will find out each and every divisor okay and then we will just sum these sum those divisors out and if the sum is equal to equal to n then we have the answer okay so if sum is equal to equal to the number that is given to us then true else false so this is the logic behind this particular problem okay now after this we will see the implementation part fine you can just view this video again from the logic building part if you have not understood how we find out that what are the devices of a particular number fine so after this let's move on to the implementation part so let's begin with the implementation now here before coding it out let's write the algorithm okay let's write the algorithm first for example now first is nothing but take the t input that is the test case input correct then run a while loop or run a loop for t number of times correct then inside of it now what we will do we will take n input that is the number that is given to us fine when we take n input now we need a variable sum okay that will store the sum of all the devices fine after this we'll have a loop we'll have a loop that will run from 1 to less than n okay in this loop if my n mod i equal to equal to 0 then we have to update the sum with i correct sum with i that is sum equals to sum plus i we have to update the sum fine now at the end after this loop is over after this loop is over if my sum is equal to equal to the number that is given to us then we have to print true else we have to print false so this is the logic that we thought of correct these are all the things that we need so writing this way down tells you that whatever you need so we need a variable t we need a variable n we need a loop here we need a variable sum okay we need a loop here an if condition here updation here of the sum okay and then again if condition at the end so we know what we need to do inside our code okay now we will code it after the coding part i will just tell you after the coding part i will just simply tell you what are the common mistakes that are made in this particular problem and how to avoid those mistakes so let us begin with the implementation so first we need a variable t okay for test cases fine take this input say in t after that we need a loop a while loop or a for loop whatever you choose okay that will run t number of times then we need n so take the input n that is a user input after this what we need we need a sum variable so n sum equals to zero okay so that it does not take any garbage value so for int i equal to one i less than n and i plus plus and i plus plus okay so i equal to one i less than n i plus plus now what we have to check if my n if my n is perfectly divisible by i if n mod i equal to equal to zero if this part is true if n mod i equal to equal to zero then we need to update our sum variable so sum equals to sum plus i okay and if this part is not true okay then we have to do nothing the loop will again iterate back okay after this if sum equal to equal to n check at the end if some value is exactly equal to the value of n then we will print we will print true see out true correct and a new line statement at the end new line character at the end else we will print false else see out false okay so after this test our program okay run it with single inputs multiple inputs okay custom test cases okay and then we will go to submission part okay once we know that it is correct from our end we think it is correct then we can move to the submission part okay so let's begin with some test cases so i will give five test cases that means the loop will run five number of times first is six the answer should come as true yes second is 81 
answer should come as false yes the third one is 28 the answer should come as true correct then it is 51 let's see it is false 100 false okay so for 6 and 28 it should have come true it is coming true and 81 is false and 51 is false so yes we are getting our correct answers okay let's test for one more case a corner case for this particular problem so and what is it it is nothing but one one okay see we are checking with one okay we are checking with one correct now if n mod i equal to equal to zero that means one mod one equal to equal to zero it will print the answer it will print the answer definitely it will print the answer that is sum equals to sum plus i okay sum will become one and it will print nothing but let's see false it is printing false why so sum becomes equal to equal to i then also it is printing false why the reason being when i equals to one i less than n becomes false because n value is directly equal to one okay i less than n becomes false now this is a corner case why if you write i equal to one i less than equal to n that means you are also considering the number itself now it says that we have to add all the devices except that number except that number all the devices okay so for one the answer should have come false and it is coming false so the code is correct okay so this was a corner test case in the problem okay so while writing a problem you have to test the test case for many inputs the code with many inputs okay so this was a boundary case also in the constraints you can see the smallest value of n will be one so you have to test for all these values you have to test for all these values fine so let's now begin uh, i will just show you a dry run of this code fine to understand to make you be understand better or how the code is actually running fine so if you have understood it you can skip that part okay and if you want to understand how the actual code is running okay then you can watch that part okay so let's begin with that dry run so if this is the test case that t equals to 2 and n1 is 6 and 2 is 8 so let's see now so first t value will become 2 t, we are here so t value will become 2 so in t we have 2 as the value correct then uh, n will be initialized and it will be given the value of 6 for first t the n will be given as 6 okay then I'll, i value from 1 it will go till n it will go to less than n now we have to check if n mod i equal to equal to 0 so n value is currently 6 and i value is currently 1 so check is 6 mod 1 equal to equal to 0 yes this will give me a 0 this will give me a true so we'll go inside and some value was currently 0 some value was currently 0 okay so sum equals to sum plus i so sum equals to sum sum value is nothing but 0 i value is nothing but 1 0 plus 1 will become 1 and in the sum the 1 will be updated okay then we will go to the loop again i value will now become 2 i value will now become 2 correct now when i value becomes nothing but 2 so we'll go inside okay and n is nothing but 6 so 6 mod i 6 mod 2 equal to equal to nothing but 0 so if condition is true so some value will be updated so sum equals to sum plus i some value is nothing but 1 so it will be 1 plus i value is nothing but 2 so 1 plus 2 is nothing but 3 so some value will become 3 okay now again the loop come to i plus plus so i value will be incremented to 3 when i value is incremented to 3 so n value is nothing but same till now n value is nothing but 6 so for 6 i is nothing but 3 3 is less than 6 so we will come inside obviously so n mod i so n is nothing but 6 mod i is nothing but 3 is it equal to equal to 0 yes it is equal to equal to 0 so sum will be updated some current value is 3 and i value is nothing but 3 so 3 plus 3 will be nothing but 6 okay 3 plus 3 will give me nothing but 6 okay now we will go again we'll go again so some value will be updated to 6 i value will be up updated to 4 okay now is 4 less than 6 yes is 6 mod 4 equal to equal to 0 no so we will not do anything is 6 mod 5 when i value will be incremented to 5 is 6 mod 5 equal to equal to 0 no when i value will be incremented to 6 this condition will become false that is i less than n condition will become false we will exit the for loop and we will check if sum equal to equal to n so sum value currently is 6 n value is also 6 yes they both are equal so true will be printed okay this was a dry run of this particular code now remember a common mistake that students make is to declare this sum variable outside the loop outside the loop now if you declare the variable outside the loop it is dangerous and why do you think this is dangerous because when we go out again when we go again if the variable is declared here okay now when we run the loop again the test case loop again so n value will be updated okay these all values will be updated but 
because the sum variable was outside the test case loop some variable was outside the test case loop not inside the loop but outside the loop okay some variable will not be updated okay it will remain as 6 it will remain as 6 so for each test case we need our sum variable to be 0 in the beginning we need our sum variable to be 0 in the beginning but now for the second test case when n value becomes 8 okay so when we go to sum equals to sum plus i it will increment this value it will increment this value fine so for each test case we need the value to be 6 okay if you are declaring it outside so make it 0 for each test case inside okay if you are declaring outside so make it 0 for each test case inside now the sum value will be updated to 0 understood so this is also a common mistake fine so whenever a loop is running and we need our variables to reinitialize to the basic values so we have to do that okay do not miss this step you will get a wrong answer because now for 8 we will start with 6 plus 1 okay we will not start with 0 plus 1 if the sum is equal to 0 is not written here so this was also a common mistake fine so this was the question of perfect number and divisors thank you